I'm Jeff Cornwall, and this is The Entrepreneurial Mind. Today our guest is Teja Yanamandra, here to talk about Gunio. We'll be back after these words from our sponsor. Talkopolis programming is sponsored by the following. Highland Hills, a multicultural, diversified funeral home supporting the entire Davidson County community. Visit our website at www.highlandhillsfuneralhome.com or call us at 615-650-5555. Well, welcome. Good to have you here. Good to be here. So talk a little bit about what Gunio is. You, you guys basically claim to bring all those hackers into the legitimate world of employment. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, basically. I mean, we built a website where elite software developers can connect with freelance gigs. Okay. And so, so these guys have been doing what before? Right. So we use contribution to open source software as a proxy for technical skill. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. So to, what does so to, that mean? Right. So, so to back up, what that means is if they're writing... Remember, before the interview, I didn't even know what Snapchat was. So you got to dumb this down a little I bit. I know. Here. Well, you'll find out soon. All okay. Right. So if they're writing software for the sake of, let's say, contributing to open applications... Sure. Right? I got on that. A, on an unpaid basis. Got that. That's typically like a good measure of passion for right. the craft. Right. So we take, you know, let's say how popular their code is, how widely it's used, how good the quality is, and we then use that to assess skill for software developers. So you don't just take anybody who's a freelancer out there and, and kind of connect them like a lot of the services do. You actually screen these people and, and pick the ones you want, is that right? Right, that's the idea. So it ends up leading to higher quality talent and higher quality gigs. So on, let's say, other sites, their jobs are about 500 bucks on average per pop. Right. Jobs on our site are 8,000 bucks per pop on average. So it's 16 times higher in job size. So the market has started to actually catch on to this and they realize there's a qualitative difference that goes on yeah, between yeah. those. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and and you, you chose Nashville to start this business. Yeah, that was not... This is not a technology... I mean, we're, doing, we're making good progress. We've talked a lot of that yes. about this show and, and I'm excited about this, but it's not a technology mecca. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't pick Nashville like sort of on purpose. This is where I lived. You know, um, one of the other founders lived in Philly, or kind of outside Philly, and the other founder lived in Berkeley, but he's also from Pennsylvania. And we just kind of picked Nashville as like a central hub. Okay. There's a lot going on here, very supportive ecosystem. You kind of go out to San Francisco, there's a lot of noise associated with like starting a tech startup, but here you can focus, but there's the right amount of resources to kind of take your business. So there's enough energy here now Bingo. where, where and, and there's not as much competition, you stand out. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a nice benefit, but there's also like just, just a very sort of like fertile market, you know, for it here. Uh, has it limited your ability to, to attract talent that you need and, and attract the people you need for the company at all? No, no, not really. I mean, the way that most of the software developers and employers work on our platform is they do it remotely. And so that's exactly how we work. So you can be anywhere. Absolutely. I mean, so right now, John Paul, one of the founders is in uh, Pennsylvania, Rich Jones, CTO is in Berkeley, and we all work every day together. And we have a few contractors kind of dispersed all over the U.S. I mean, if you're working through a computer, you can just be connected to an internet um, sort of service, and that's it. So what are, the, what are some of the services that were particularly helpful here in town? What did you guys take advantage of? Yeah, so, I mean, the National Entrepreneurship Center is just a nice place to hang out and just kind right. of work, you know, like they right. kind of provide the infrastructure to make it happen. And we went through Jumpstart Foundry, the incubator fund, and um, you know the network is extremely helpful, as is the sort of connections to employers. You know, so a lot of companies, what they ended up doing is they use it as a mechanism to maybe look at funding. We use it as a mechanism to meet customers. So you weren't really seeking a whole lot of funding for this deal then? No, I it mean, doesn't sound like you need a whole lot. Yeah, I think like I mean, fundamentally, the business is a website, so you don't really need that much money to grow a website. Right. So. Right. And, and the talent is all paid as they bring money in, so yes. you're cash flowing all along. Yes, absolutely. 
So you guys have a big, uh, a big gig or a big to-do or a big celebration or something coming up up in here in the, uh, around town. Yeah, so by the time this is at, we'll have our new sort of V3 at, and we've kind of changed the business model a little bit. It'll be uh, unlimited job posts for 90 bucks a month. If you want like help tailoring your job posts, we charge 1500 bucks per pop. Uh, just better kind of profiles for hackers. They'll be happier sharing their stuff from Gunyo, so it'll be, it'll be good vibes all so, around. So these, <clears throat> these hackers, they pay you to be on your site? They don't, but we, so, so for some hackers, we actually have like a group of hackers closely knit like with us. And so we act as, let's say, their agents, just as like, you know, a musician would have an agent who books them gigs right. and they get a percentage of the billings that they generate. We also have that. And so that's kind of a separate premium service that's independent of the web marketplace. Gotcha. Now, how do you market this business? How do you get the word out? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's fairly basic. Like we believe um, in every interaction we have with employers or with developers, we must give more than we receive. So what we do is any chance we get, we promote them on our site, you know, on our social media, and that sort of thing. And then if people get promoted, they share themselves. So, so you're really building this with word of mouth. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, but word of mouth takes a lot of work. It does, it does. But the thing is, I mean, the more people you have spreading the word of mouth, the faster it grows, right? So it's almost kind of like a, you know, an exponential kind of growth. The more people you add talking about the business. Right. So where does this all lead you? What, what happens with Gunio? Right. So that's a great question because I like to answer it. So right now we help uh, software developers find freelance work. What we sort of envision is becoming the most delightful way to work online, period, for any industry. So, I mean, if you look at like the state of online sort of contractor billings, in 2012, they were at 1 billion. This year, in 2014, they're projected to be at 4 billion. So 4x growth over two years. That's showing no signs of stopping. So that's kind of the market that we're going after. So, uh, for example, I'm, I'm in education and, and education is making some radical transformations to online. Yes. You guys would even be in that space at that point. To, I mean, to some extent, right? Because like, I'm sure you use MOOCs right. to broadcast some of your content. Right. Um, but, you know, if you were a tutor, how would you find, you know, freelance gigs? How would you tutor students, let's say? And so, you know, we envision to be sort of a place where that can all happen, like that type of work-related commerce can occur. That's very cool. Well, thanks for coming in. Good to see you again. Yeah, you as and, well. And stop back sometime soon. Oh, for sure. Thanks. Thank you.